Good morning to everyone. I would like to open here in number five of the 183rd period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, which is entitled Situation of Military Justice in Brazil and was requested by Justicia Global, Conectas and Terra de Derechos. Uh, my name is Julissa Mantisha Falcon. I'm the president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and country reporter for Brazil. And today with me are Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, second vice president of the commission, reporter for human rights defenders and justice operators, Joel Hernandez, and Commissioner Roberta Clark, that is reporter for the rights of LGBTI persons. I would like to start by greeting the representatives of the state. I would like to thank them for being here and also would like to thank civil society organizations. First, for those who are following us, I would like to explain the distribution of time. We will start with the first participation of civil society organizations. Please introduce yourselves as you take the floor. You will have the floor for 20 minutes. After that, the state will have 20 minutes. And finally, the Inter-American Commission will have the floor for another for 20 minutes. And then we will have a second round of comments. Civil society and the state will have 12 minutes each. There are some additional indications that I have to mention. First, that we have a digital tool to measure time. We have simultaneous interpretation and closed captioning. And these hearings are streamed and the recordings of the hearings will be available on the channel of YouTube of the IACHR. Having said this, I would like to give the floor to civil society for their first intervention. Go ahead. Civil society, can you begin? Hello, good morning to everyone. Commissioners of these uh, of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, representatives of the state and other participants. My name is Roberta and I'm part of Conectas. We have requested this hearing with uh, the Institute of Human Rights, Justicia Global and Terra de Derechos who fight for human rights. We thank the commission, uh, especially Madam President, for the opportunity of expressing our concern regarding the um, situation of uh, military justice in Brazil. Daniel Somertos, um, who is a member of um, the a lawyer of the organization from Rio de Janeiro, and uh, the different members of the civil society who will make their contributions. I will now give the floor to Daniel Sarmento. Good morning to everyone. I want to apologize because I have some problems with my audio in Zoom. One of the basic characteristics of constitutional democracies is uh, the participation of um, the extended power of military pa pa justice in Brazil. Military justice integrated by uh, active militaries can judge uh, civilians in cases that have to do with human rights uh, cases, the design of the uh, military justice of the Union was developed after the dictatorship in 1968. And since the return of democracy, military justice has not been reviewed so that it adapts to um, human rights parameters. And their competence has been extended in 2004 they have included uh, crimes against uh, civilians and these uh, activities that are related to the uh, operations to ensure public order, the extended power of military justice 
also include uh, crimes against lives, militars against uh, civilians. And this is in law 13.491 of 2017. The uh, tribunal of jury not only acts in crimes committed by federal militaries when they are involved in these uh, operations to ensure public orders. There are two instances. These um, trials are carried out by um, ministers or officials that are part of the um, military uh, forces, and some of them do not have any uh, judicial training. In 2018, there's a law that has been passed, and these officers uh, not only act in first instance cases, the last instances are made up by the Superior Tribunal uh, with 15 ministers. 10 are officers of the military forces who are active. There is no judicial training and this minister even judge civilians. The training compromise impartiality. The trend of these ministers is that they are very hard on their punishment to civilians. They do not guarantee basic human rights during the proceeding. And there's a trend uh, regarding um, military officers who are tried for violating human rights. And there is a, an increase of impunity. In connection to civilians, there are accusations against uh, crimes regarding resistance and lack of obedience and armed forces participate in different operations to ensure public orders. Also, they punish um, different um, crimes related to uh, freedom of expression. When they even judge uh, civilians when they believe that they are, uh, these civilians are affecting the military institutions. This extended competence of the military justice has been uh, demanded since for a long time. For example, the competence of the military justice to judge other military offices. We even question the competence of military justice in uh, crimes against life, even practice against civilians in times of peace. They judge um, crimes against honor. These actions are being um, processed by the superior tribunal. The extended competence of military justice as you will hear afterwards, is against uh, human rights and perpetrates the practices of the dictatorship in a country like Brazil, who has not been able to carry out a fluid transition. This is a violation to human rights and a threat to the democracy of Brazil. I will now give the floor to my colleague, Tiago Amparo. Good morning to everyone, commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm going to speak about how this military justice violates human rights standards. It is important to mention, as it has been mentioned before, that military justice in Brazil is not aligned with democracy. 
For example, after the law in 2018 has been passed, there is no barrier established in regards to the judgment of um, crimes committed by military officers and, or civilians. There is no uh, transition uh, process that has been postponed since the dictatorship. If we analyze who is being punished, who is being uh, prosecuted, we see that military officers are in charge of prosecuting uh, civilians. In Brazil, we still lack this uh, judicial transformation. This violates inter-American standards. The right to access justice is related to the fact that military justice is not impartial. The degree of independency of independence is something that needs to be reformed so that justice operators can, ha can have the uh, independence so they can exercise their uh, power. In the case of Brazil, these requirements are not fulf fulfilled. The investigators are not competent to investigate human rights violations. The Inter-American Court has considered that military courts do not have the jurisdiction to investigate. And in Brazil, this is a country that, uh, in which the police murders um, thousands of persons every year. And this is a practice to expand the borders of military justice. And there's a frustration in every investigation regarding human rights violations. For example, in different cases, the um, court determined that military justice is not competent to investigate um, these kind of cases in, that involved human rights violations with the participations of military officers. These uh, persons investigating or judging uh, the actors of the crimes should not be involved or should not have any relation with the persons being judged. The judges that are active members um, uh, officers are lack uh, any partiality. Military just uh, tribunals should be impartial. And sometimes these uh, courts, these tribunals include civilians. Furthermore, this military tribunal should not have any jurisdiction in order not to judge uh, human rights violations. International standards regarding human rights determine that these courts should not uh, investigate um, the crimes committed by militaries or uh, the armed forces in Brazil. Furthermore, the principles that are enshrined in the Inter-American Convention uh, that are highlighted by specialist rapporteurs in different areas determine that military justice cannot be deciding on human rights violations because these are not crimes of uh, military nature, thus they do not have any jurisdiction. There, 
state of Brazil has not carried out any uh, changes in the judiciary system in order to guarantee independence. And I will now give the floor to the next colleague of my delegation. Good morning. I am Victor Santiago. I, it's a great to have this opportunity to be speaking here. I am a victim of that violence, the absurd, that absurd violence exerted by militaries in 2015. His connection breaks up. He was in Rio de Janeiro. And I was paraplexed as a result of an attack, and my left leg was uh, cut. Was had, was I? I underwent a surgery. A lot of things happened during that period. After what happened with me, I what? I, we you do not have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was on in, living my everyday life and. I was in my car with my friends and I was attacked by soldiers during 2014, 2015, sorry. And there were many soldiers and 15 minutes later, another group of soldiers, another patrol um, shot another car. And that is where I was hurt. I was uh, admitted in hospitals. I had to undergo several surgeries. And I had several respiratory issues as a result of them as well. And I wanted the justice to, to act and to... and to judge what had happened. And what was important for me is that this doesn't happen to other people. With other civilians, but nothing happened in 2017, I believe it was 2017, no, 2018. There was a car that uh, they uh, the, uh, they came from the military justice and they mounted a uh, military justice court to judge that case. So militaries perform the acts and they also judge. I have been speaking about these so that this doesn't happen to other people so that they stop prosecuting us so that they stop hurting us as who are black who live in favelas who are poor and so that our rights are no longer violated and so that those problems do not happen anymore i would like to thank once more for the opportunity and i will keep on speaking about this until the end of my life i will always um, tell this. I will give now the floor to Tonio Rivera. Claudio, you are on mute. We cannot hear you. Sorry. Good morning, everybody. I am, I am representing a group of peasants. I've been here for 34 years, and it's a very similar story to that what uh, other peasants here in Brazil. The military civilian military officers are used to threat the peasants and black people 
It's because of the segregation of the territories and because their lands were taken from them and because of the violence of popular movements. I'm sorry, but the sound is breaking up. There are lots of excuses all the time to try to conceal those who perpetrate these awful acts. These are historical acts. And that was a paper of the military justice in Brazil since its foundation to guarantee impunity committed by military agents, even against its, peop its own people in the defense of public, of private interest or on the defense of the invasion of indigenous lands. It's an, a history which is recent, the Carajas massacre. It's an example on how in Brazil, the military forces use their force in order to warranty their impunity because these cases, even though they are in fragrancy, they are judged by military justice. Everything was possible was done in order to warrant impunity in 2016. The story is repeated over and over in the municipality of Iwasu and Prana. Over 130 shoots of firearms against peasants we who were inside the property recognize as them and we are now with two uh, groups, military groups. Uh, that wanted to occupy this place in an illegal way in 1993. Somebody known as Teixeirinha also um, had to surrender to justice. And unfortunately, this crime that she suffered is still impune. All people over 18 who live in these lands know about these histories. The police doesn't do anything about them. They, and military police as well. This is common to all people. There are several crimes that are committed by officials, by state officials. There is even sometimes a lot of violence, physical torture, psychological torture. Uh, threats, racism, and other crimes. The use of uh, drones, the use of spies, and uh, several eviction plans that are carried down now. And they suggest that the PM has to do their actions with four police for each member of the community. It doesn't matter if it's a woman, man, uh, elderly people, they, pre they have four militaries to combat only one person or to attack one person. We believe that 100,000 families live in those camps threatened by the police in Brazil. We want, sorry, Mr. Claudio, we have to interrupt because you have taken one additional minute, but you will have the second opportunity to speak. Thank you. Uh, I have to interrupt you, but this is part of the dynamic. You will have more space to participate later. And now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners, representatives of the, universe, of the organizations of the civil society. Good morning. My, no my name is Bruna. I am... Um, from the Ministry of Foreign Relationships in Brazil. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak and to present information as to this situation of the military justice in Brazil and as to the uh, different actions that happen. In Brazil, there are two types of military justice in Brazil, the federal military justice composed by different justice and uh, appointed by law and the state military justice. This is composed by five, by 15 ministers who are, uh, four are from the Marine 
forces, three from the air forces, and five are civilians. The objective of HAVA tribunals formed by civilians and militaries is to, um, to have a tribunal with people who really know human rights and between the civilians there are members of the uh, different universities of legal universities the devices for which the military justice acts is in relation to the different treaties signed by the country such as the uh, constitution of human rights and this has to be taken by a competent judge and this has to be unbiased which hap what and that is what happens in brazil apart from these taking into consideration the declaration of human rights of the united nations the military justice may just civilians if all the warranties pro provided by the parties are complied with and their political rights and this was verified in brazil that is how as to the they judge all these uh, facts, all these acts committed by the um, civilians, because these acts that are to be judged here are part of the judicial branch. There is at least one judge in its composition. All these topics are going to be detailed by the procurement Procure pro, for the General Prosecution Office, Antonio Duarte, who will be speak about this, and by the lawyers of the union, Dr. Suarez, who will also provide his explanation, and by the Secretary of the Ministry of Women, uh, Family and Human Rights, Eduardo Miranda, who will talk about the uh, democratic institutionality in this sense. I will give the floor to Antonio. Dear commissioners and participants of this important event of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, it's a pleasure to contribute to the reflections of this commission. In relation to the whole systems, I would like to clarify things as to the clarification of the broadening of the jurisdiction of the military com competence and the different obligations assumed by the Brazilian state and the considerations as to the particularities of the military justice in Brazil. The first thing questioned in 1997, um, according to which the military justice has to judge the different crimes it is a consequence, the definition of those missions to the Marine, to the Army, and to the Air Force. And there is no, uh, no activities can be done by the military for, for forces without the due protection and without the solution of the criminal laws for those that can be carried out. in the different laws required the, the lack of precedence of the action. The second contested uh, act is law 13491 of 2017 that expanded concept of military crime to encompass the crimes provided in the common legislation, which returned to the military justice of the units uh, competence to judge crimes against the life of civilians committed by uh, officers of the armed forces in the context of actions described in um, Article 2. Um, section 2 of Article 9 of this law. As a firm modification in practice, there has been promoted the provision of new criminal types, expanding the list of military crimes, which will only have um, this nature. And as with the criminal types already provided in the CP. 
and therefore given the need to adapt any crime provided in the legislation to the hypothesis of article 9 of the cpm regarding competence of military justice there is no unrestricted or abusive expansion of just such jurisdiction reasoning differently good resulting ideological conclusion that the CPN lists an exhaustive and immutable list of military crimes and be um, out of step regarding current reality. Regarding the second modification, what Law 13.491 of 2017 did was to restore to the federal military justice the judgment of intentional crimes uh, against the lives of civilians when they occur in the context of military actions constitutionally delegated to the armed uh, forces um, since the judiciary expertise can judge cases in which the particularities of military life must be taken into account. The military justice of the uni Union tried and sentenced eight soldiers in sentences of 28 to 31 years in prison in the case known as Guadalupe, which took place in Rio de Janeiro. Um, military justice could be corporate. It was argued that it would be corporate and magistrate could not be impartial or independent relating these issues to the trial of civilians by the military justice of the Union subject uh, matter regarding the ADPF 2289. Regarding Amicus Curai, the, uh, the military justice of the Union in the Brazilian state regarding redemocratization has the option in 1988 to maintain the competence for military crimes. Unlike what occurs in other countries, it is a civil body, part of the judiciary established on a permanent and regular basis, it is not a martial court. It is endowed of independence, impartiality by a constitutional mandate common to all branches of the judicial system. Military justice is required to respect guarantees and try in Article 5 of the Constitution and due process adversary system and full this defense. Federal justice are granted all guarantees provided in the constitution and the same prohibitions are applied as to all members of the Brazilian judiciary. It is a permanent civil institution. The military public prosecutor's office provided in the constitution made up of member who become part of it uh, through public competition and who have the same guarantees and prohibitions as other members of the public ministry. The military justice of the union does not, um, is not a martial court um, and any comparison with institution of this nature should be avoided. In fact, the UN through the sub Committee for the Promotion and Protection of Human Rights carried out research on the administration of military justice. In this um, research, several principles were analyzed, um, and we can uh, name, for example, that military justice must have its origin in the Constitution and guaranteed you process of law and observance of the norms uh, and procedures recognized by international. Um, law, even in periods of exemption, uh, publicity as a rule of non legal secrecy, precautionary measures restricting liberty cannot be um, a secret regarding the identity of the persons and place of detention. Guarantee the exercise of habeas corpus to all those deprived of liberty, existence of a competent independent court, uh, prohibit. Uh, secret prosecutors, access to process by different proceedings by the victims, right to appeal in ordinary courts and periodic reviews. These aspects are observed by the military justice 
and these are subjects to review in cases provided for in the law or in the constitution and in the case of appeals uh, ordinary or extraordinary habeas corpus and reads not to mention the possibility of filing habeas corpus directly to the supreme court in addition to these guarantees especially in the jurisdiction over civilians have been introduced and applied in military criminal um, law regarding competence to judge civilians law 13774 of 2008 analyze uh, the transfer from the councils of justice to federal judge of military justice to come to judge uh, military crimes committed by agents even when uh, accused with military in the same processes uh, which was decisive in ADPF to uh, 289, the Attorney General's Office also reversed its claim requesting the dismissal of the request. Legislative changes that modifies competence of military justice do not offend constitutional principles or in international conventions. The configuration of military justice in Brazil within national judiciary demands its functioning with independence and respect for all warranties. This is what we wanted to share. I will now give the floor to the following representative. Thank you. Dear commissioners, There are at least five uh, lawsuits in progress before the Federal Supreme Court regarding the competence of the military justice in Brazil. We have the ADPF 289 and different uh, actions uh, like 5032 and the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights will find information about these actions. This has to do with different um, actions carried out by the military. These actions were presented by the prosecutor and are being um, analyzed by the Supreme Court. We question different uh, articles that are related to investigation of crimes against life, practice against civilians. This action is included in the calendar of the Supreme Court in July this year. Finally, the direct actions that have been imposed uh, question the military justice, which is established in common legislation, even crimes against life practice by uh, military officers against civilians, which are related to military actions. These actions, these um, investigations were start, were opened many years ago and are being uh, processed. The Inter-American Commission will find further information um, in the information provided by the Brazilian state. The in American Commission will be able to see the list of all the organizations that participate in these processes as the amicus curiae. Some of these uh, processes are being analyzed by the Supreme Court. These will make the Supreme Court to make different uh, provisions regarding these cases. We 
cannot guarantee that these uh, processes will be we have a sentence according to the calendar regarding the conventionality of different uh, quest issues regarding the cases being tried by the military justice. I will now give the floor to the Ministry of Human Rights. Good morning to everyone, commissioners, representatives of the civil society. The competence of the military justice uh, in Brazil have been established by constitutions. This includes different uh, representatives and civilians and different congressmen that, that have worked for many months in, in order to draft the civilian constitution. This is a body that uh, responds to public interest to protect human rights, for example, when there are crimes against human life, guaranteeing all warranties um, and respecting human rights. Human rights in our country is dealt with in a transversal way. The different bodies that make up the Federal Republic uh, protect and uh, human rights of all persons in the country. All bodies at the municipal or national level should um, respond in a timely manner to human rights um, violations in order to guarantee uh, that all violations are investigated. Traditionally, act in humanitarian actions that impact uh, in situations of vulnerability. We need to highlight a task force for the protection of um, uh, operational uh, operation acolida for to provide humanitarian assistance to migrants and refugees from Venezuela. The commitment of the Brazilian state regarding the democratic institutionality of human rights was highlighted when we created the national program for uh, human rights education in 2018, which is a set of free certified workshops um, to deal with different human rights uh, issues for communities, social organizations, and public officials of uh, all areas, we uh, provide these workshops that are free and online. These uh, workshops carried out in the national program since 2018 already had more than 600,000 participants. And this is... Um, training uh, program that has been uh, developed by the Minister of the Women, Family and Human Rights. And this shows the commitment of different actors for the promotion of said rights. It's important to underscore that we are open and respect international treaties, especially those regarding human rights. Afterwards, the process to ratify international treaties, which has been uh, uh, dealt by the legislative power, made up by uh, elective representatives by the people, shows that Brazil is a uh, democratic, um, uh, there is democratic role, uh, rule of law. 
Brazil supports in extensive way the operations to face human rights violations committed by military offices and uh, members of the public forces for their train uh, training uh, regarding human rights, showing their interest regarding human rights. Thank you very much. Now we will have the participation of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. First of all, I will give the floor to Commissioner Margaret May McCauley, uh, second vice president. Uh, if you have any questions, Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, may I bid a very good morning to everyone, the civil society and the representatives of the state of Brazil. I thank both of you, of you, civil society and the representative of the state for the facts uh, uh, statements you've made to us uh, to enlarge our knowledge. Um, in relation, to, I, I as the rapporteur of Afro-descendant rights and uh, against racism and the rapporteur of um, the L, um, rights of the elderly, I am, um, very concerned in the, my both rapporteurships as to the effect of the what the commission and the court uh, have considered for years the encroachment of military justice into the realm of um, civilian administration of justice in in brazil particularly and also several other countries um, because it doesn't only happen in brazil uh, which is unfortunate. Um, I, I certainly was um, a member of the court when pronouncements were made uh, against this practice in, in various states in, um, in cases that came before it. And the commission has over the years made public statements, published its recommendations for state parties to cease and desist from expanding military justice into civilian lives and for the administration of justice against civilians who might have committed acts of, of, of alleged crimes um, for them not to be tried on the military system of justice but in the general civilian courts. I, as I say in, in relation to Afro-descendants it is um, clear that the they are the greatest majority of victims of the incursions by military justice, by military troops into uh, favelas and its periphery uh, surrounding areas um, in the so-called exercise of, of public security by them. And they have killed, they're maimed physically, they are um, detained, and they are tried in military justice for crimes which ought to, alleged crimes uh, or actions which are deemed crimes um, in, in the military courts, which as I said, both the commission and the court deem impermissible. And in the, indeed, um, um, indigenous um, persons as well are being the subject of, of military action. So I have um, these questions to ask. What I uh, address to the state particularly, but I would uh, be grateful for civil society to give their input as well. What measures have been adopted to prevent racial profiling practices, which are embedded in the military system from our point of view and our findings? Um, we, we would like to have particular specific answers to that. And also, what is the status of the investigation into cases of sexual violence against women in the favelas by the military throughout a woman's life cycle, both the girl child, the woman, the elderly woman. So throughout the life cycle. And we need um, specific answers to, to that. that what, what actions are taken against the military to, 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 for investigation and punishment? 
and trial and punishment for, for these acts, which are plentiful. And um, yes, and, and what, what, what we, could you, if you cannot answer these questions today, um, please give us some answers in writing so that we can have specific um, 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 information about them. It's very, very important for us to have the age, race, ethnicity, uh, and, and status of the victims of military justice, uh, military action, I beg your pardon, military action within the areas where Afro-descendants and um, indigenous people, peoples reside. Um, thank you. I, time is short, so gracias. I would like to ask a lot more, but time is short. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Eh, Comisionada Clark. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Clark. You have the floor. Commissioner Roberto, if you have any questions, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much, President, and uh, good morning, uh, members of the representatives of the state, uh, representatives of civil society organizations, and my colleagues within the um, Inter-American Commission. Um, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to understand a little bit more about this um, issue. Um, back in 2017, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, as well as the High Commissioner for Human Rights, also made a statement um, on the proposed, then it was proposed um, bill, I think it's 744 of 2017. And back in 2017, the both organizations agreed that the military courts are not the proper jurisdiction um, to investigate and where applicable prosecute and punish alleged perpetrators of human rights violations. In, in both cases of the institutions, they spoke to the need for independence of the judiciary and all the elements of that independence. And they cast doubt on whether or not military uh, tribunals could meet that high standard of independence. Uh, my, my question is, having regard to what I've heard this morning, um, I guess I want to find out what measures have been taken to secure the independence of the judiciary. And we understand within the commission that one of the central elements of independence is security of tenure, irremovability. So I would like to ask uh, representative of the state, what measures have been taken to secure independence of the judiciary in that regard? Secondly, what measures have been taken to guarantee the impartiality of these military uh, tribunals or military courts? As I understand it, um, across the, the, the justice cycle from laying of the charges to prosecution of the charges and to the adjudication of the charges, all three of these elements are managed by the military in the context of this military justice which seems to raise the issue of securing impartiality. So I would like to find out in the scheme of that, 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 that obtains within the military courts, what are the measures to guarantee that impartiality? And thirdly, in relation to the elements of independence of the judiciary, that of competence, what measures, particularly where you have a tribunal comprised of persons across a range of backgrounds, but not necessarily with legal competence, what measures have been taken to assure um, of, of competence to hear and adjudicate fairly in accordance with due process um, cases before the, the, the military courts. And then fourthly, I believe that uh, Mr. Suarez might have spoken about it, but I'm not quite sure I understood. Has the Constitutional Court of Brazil adjudicated on the constitutionality of the law 44 of, of, May, of 2017? I would like to hear a little bit more about that and or in relation to the five cases that are pending, what, at what state are those cases? And finally, what is the oversight on these military courts? Are the judgments appealable before the Supreme Court? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner. As Rapporteur for Brazil and Rapporteur for Women, I will be asking some questions. First of all, I thank you for your presence. Uh, the state has referred many times that this uh, justice uh, procedure is established in their constitution. I wanted to remind you of the of the article number two that establishes that member states are committed to adopt and adapt any internal domestic measure that 
uh, for the compliance of their obligations. I'm sure that the state and the civil society know the jurisprudence of the courts. So I wanted to remind you of some of the sentences, for instance, Rodriguez Veras, where the court establishes that the military jurisdiction is not the competent jurisdiction to investigate and sanction the perpetrators of alleged human rights violations, but rather that this uh, is the competence of ordinary justice. This has been repeated in many, many other case cases. Uh, this is the starting point, but in line with this reasoning and uh, what my colleagues mentioned on uh, impartiality, I had a very concrete question uh, directed to the state. It has to do with the criteria established and also with the fact that whether there has been any a measure regarding gender because the Inter-American Court has established that those judges ha that have gender stereotypes, they should, they may express them in their sentences. Uh, so I wanted to know if you can measure this gender stereotypes on uh, people who are members of the military justice. Also, I wanted to ask if those people who are judges in military justice system have undergone a revision of their background, their record, because if they have been participants in gender violence, I wanted to know if they are excluded from the military justice system. Also, in line with what Mr. Melo was mentioning as regards uh, training, I wanted to know what are the training programs focused on gender, especially in the investigation of sexual violence. How are those judges trained and what are the evaluation criteria on this topic? I wanted to remind you also of resolution, actually all resolutions of the uh, Security Council of the United States, where they clearly established that sexual violence implies the need to consider it as a human rights violation or a crime against humanity. So I want to know which are the measures taken in this sense, because sexual violence under no point of view has been, uh, can be submitted to uh, military justice. And finally, very respectfully, I wanted to ask the state, how do you evaluate, how do you assess this military justice system? Can you tell us what are the uh, levels of achievement to achieve human rights defense? I say this here at this here and uh, here before Victor Mara Parecido de Oliveira, for instance, who, um, so I wanted to know if you consider that the administration of the ju military justice actually is in line with the expectations of the Brazilian state. So how are you assessing this fact? I ask uh, the executive secretariat uh, if they have any questions. Thank you very much, Madam President. Actually, more than a question, this is a sort of um, record setting. The Inter-American uh, System of Human Rights has been following up the uh, military, criminal military justice uh, actions as regards military officers who have committed human rights violations against civilians. And even before the Inter-American Court on Human Rights had uh, pronounced these uh, sentences uh, referred today, uh, by the commissioners and the representatives, the Inter-American Commission through its monitoring mechanisms such as uh, country reports had already established this, especially on the report related to the in loco visit to Peru in 1998, the Inter-American Commission warned that the problem of impunity was uh, worsened because the cases related to human rights violations on the part of uh, the armed, the security forces should not be tried by the uh, military justice system. And also as regards Colombia, the 
Commission indicated that this is not a problem as regards uh, declaring innocent those military officers who have been accused of this uh, serious crime, such as the case uh, established by the uh, testimony today, but actually that the rule of law itself and the democratic system itself that has been affected by this, such as uh, the facts related to natural judges, independence and impartiality of justice. So, from the uh, executive secretariat, of course, we can draft a dossier of all the decisions, country reports, thematic reports, case decisions that the commission has uh, given on this matter so that this can be an input to the work we have been doing and to follow up these actions that are very important and that are being debated today in Brazil on this topic. So thank you very much, Madam President. And I greet all of the representatives today at this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. I wanted to mention something else. Uh, recently, we published the report on the situation of human rights in Brazil, and we talk about this issue of the military justice in Brazil. And I think that there are several opportunities of exchanging information, hearings, meetings, or a visit that could be conducted eventually. Uh, having said this, I would like to give the floor back to the civil society uh, for 12 minutes. One comment required by the interpreters, please speak a little bit slowly so we can interpret, they can interpret uh, with all uh, well. Civil society, you have the floor. Ms. Camila, you have the floor. You're on mute. Good morning. I would like to thank once more this opportunity. I would like to take opportunity. We will give the floor to Gabriel Sampaio, uh, who is a lawyer of collectors, and afterwards Camila. And we make our final remarks. I'm sorry, Camila has already started. Maybe she can continue. I can speak afterwards. Okay. I would like to thank you for this hearing. And I would like to take the opportunity to make some comments. I would like to say that we, we hoped to hear some uh, progress, uh, positive progress uh, from the state in line with inter-American standards regarding military justice, because there is a lack of balance between uh, military justice in Brazil and inter-American standards that are supported by jurisprudence as has been mentioned by the commissioners. This is a fact. Regarding what the state mentioned, I would like to say that initially it is important to say that the competence of military justice in Brazil is not being described in the constitution. The constitution makes reference to law. So the way military justice is organized in Brazil, we should, uh, we are not able to say that it is described in our constitution. But even if uh, co the Constitution had any provision in that sense, there is no need to adapt uh, this as there are inter-American parameter standards. So we uh, need to discuss from now on. Another comment is that the representative of the public ministry mentioned that the competence to judge uh, um, crimes against civilians taking into account law 13.491 of 2018, it has restored an original competence. 
which shows a setback because it has been a uh, modification of law in 1996, which was celebrated by the civil society and was the result of a discussion uh, regarding how the crimes against civilians were um, prosecuted. Gabriel can add further information about that, but that reference of a restitution to a regional competence is a clear example of a setback. Brazil made a progress, but from some time uh, onwards, it has uh, moved backwards. Regarding violence against women in the context of agents, uh, state agents, armed forces, militaries, there is a lot of information about that and civil society organizations will uh, gather that information in order to present them in written. It's important to say that violence against women committed by state agents, military agents, occurs in the urban and rural context. We make a reference to the fact that when evictions took, uh, take place, this violence is very common. It, it is also important to highlight that there is a great concern regarding cases uh, judged by military justice. There is a common recommendation from the Commission to the state regarding uh, these cases, but there is no progress made, otherwise we wouldn't be here. I will now give the floor to my colleague, but before that, I would like to say that taking into account that Inter-American standard is consolidated, the Commission could think why the civil society is making this request again, uh, discussing once again the situation of military justice in Brazil. We believe that as, as in other opportunities, when other organizations, uh, human rights organizations made a request before the state uh, in connection to the legislative power, uh, present this uh, jurisprudence, the experience of different countries that have consolidated these parameters to uh, determine that uh, crimes against civilians cannot be tried or human rights uh, violations cannot be tried by military justice. Now, we are facing the fact that this legislation has been passed and now we discuss the constitutionality of that legislation. And we want to have a dialogue with the Federal Supreme Court by presenting this uh, information mentioned by the ad hoc executive secretary in order to um, find a solution in that sense we are not at ease, we are concerned. I will now give the floor to my colleague, Gabriel. Good morning to everyone present here today, to the president of this here hearing. And I would like to thank all the comments made by the commissioners. And I would like to highlight two points. Firstly, regarding the fact that being part of the national judiciary does not take into account uh, the problems regarding military justice. Taking into account what has been explained, we could say that the composition of the military court has only one woman that shows that the composition continues to be, um, it is made up mainly by active military officers. Only five persons are from the civil society. And this is the uh, most important body of the 
military uh, justice of the union union when we discussed this uh, law that was passed in 1996 uh, modifying the uh, prosecution of cases against uh, human rights this was a progress made by the civil society and this progress has been left aside by the passing of the new legislation this was a cpi that counted with the participation of the civil society and responded to the demand of the civil society and um, victims of violence especially the alteration uh, regarding its legislative nature a bill that had a temporary that was temporary and that instrument that is to say the civil society was excluded from the legislative debate in which that modification was made and they did away with the uh, achievement that was made in 1996 this is a restitution of the competence of the military justice and they did away with the success achieved by the civil society and by that democratic debate in our country i want to conclude by saying that modifications to extend the competence of military justice made by ordinary law occurred at the same time in parallel with an increase of um, uh, higher employment rates within the military forces the investigation instruments to analyze institutional violence are not compatible with the uh, progress um, in the international uh, scope regarding human rights. And we need to change this situation in order to guarantee that uh, situations of violence are duly investigated. Thank you, Gabriel. We would like to say that organizations would like to request the commission to pay special attention to this extension of military justice and that goes against what the oas and the un establish we call on the uh, brazilian state to respect all the commitments taken at an international level, taking into account the uh, reversal of the militarization, taking into account the recommendations of international and national bodies, and um, bearing in mind ratification of international uh, treaties. And today, it's been four years since uh, the Inter-American Accord um, issue and a statement regarding the Herzog against Brazil case taking uh, in connection with uh, military justice and its competence in Brazil. In a rule of law, military justice should be restrictive and exceptional. And it's not competence to prosecute and punish uh, human rights violations that corresponds to ordinary justice. That's why we request organizations can express uh, regarding the uh, process that are being done by the Supreme Court. The commission should schedule a, a work meeting so that the uh, Brazilian state adapts its legislations in accordance with international standards. We would like to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to the state. Our civil society have 12 minutes and we give them to uh, 12 minutes. So the state has 12 minutes to speak. Thank you very much. I would like to respond 
to the different questions posed by the commissioners, underscoring that it is possible to reanalyze the cases that are in the military courts, the Supreme Courts through several remedies can, uh, through several actions can review all the decisions made by the military courts. And there is a system that pre that uh, proposes the action of the National Council of Justice and the prosecution office. And there have been advances, not only in terms to the uh, violation of human rights, but also in terms of gender violence. We also created the uh, Council for, of Women and even though we have only one magistrate woman, woman at the time, it's because the entrance of uh, women in the armed forces is recent. So probably with the passing of time, the women that are be part of the uh, courts will also be higher and they will be integrating the military courts in the future. I would also like to highlight that in the context of the military uh, courts, there are lots of uh, women prosecutor and sub prosecutors and the minister the public office is always open to the different claims and all of them are uh, pass through all the instances that are that have to be done and to judge all practices that offend the values contained in the UN charters. Uh, we also created the Secretary of Human Rights and Human and International Re Relations, and it's also open for the good debates. And I believe that we are making progress because our system and the adoption of a military justice did not happen overnight. It was a fruit of a joint effort where Brazil decided to alter its constitutional order and to discuss a new charter where all the population can um, give an opinion through an assembly. And this does not uh, affect the principles and the values because this integrates the judicial branch and it is controlled by the Supreme Court. So, the there are some so if the judges make errors they can be revised and reanalyzed if, if there are several principles for instance the bias and independence this can be taken to the national Council's council of justice as well so the military justice it's not exempt to controls there can be decisions that are contrary to the interest of people, but justice is done through several acts when several sentences are uh, issued. And these are from magistrates that are prepared and that pass the filter of the public contest. I would like to underscore that in our institution, most of them are civil i am civil for instance i have i was never part of the armed forces but we need to understand that the armed forces have extraordinary roles and we have a justice in order to judge the and this does not uh, is uh, this is not again the international principles the brazilian model has uh, military justice that complies with other justice system. I am at your disposal and I would like to thank you for your attention. I will give the floor to another state representative. Thank you. In relation to the questions that were made by Commissioner Roberta Clark as to the Supreme uh, 
federal court and the revision of those actions, I believe we, we have to underscore the fact that in as to the debates, in 2017 with law 13491 there is no a final decision of the supreme court on the constitutionality the two actions on which such legislation is challenged both question this legal alteration and are pending judgment and we we expect that the Supreme Tribunal will judge on the constitutionality of it because the organizations that were uh, filing for the request and other civil societies that act as amicus curiae question the constitutionality as it was said here before. So we believe that the Supreme Court will speak about this aspect, about the constitutionality of this legal operation. Those proceedings, we believe that after the voting, that pro those processes will be included in the calendar for judging. In relation to the uh, redress system, we explained that there are for the several um, redresses for the Supreme Court and they can be reviewed by the Supreme Court. And and they are related to the omission of judging or certain final decisions that are hidden. And this is something very positive for the Brazilian because these judicial actions, one is on the loan 2017 and 2018, they will have a conclusive uh, judge. Uh, so we have to discuss that they will not have the final word on these aspects. The Brazilian state knows on the different questionings. They have been called to uh, observe these trials and they are going to be carried out on March 23rd. And out of them, three, uh, are going to be in the first term, one in March, another in May, and the other one in June. So we are going to exert the, the exhaustion of uh, legal resources in relation to the uh, issues brought here the obedience of the legal, uh, the compliance with the inter-American parameters that were already exposed. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to know if the representatives of the state have concluded their presentation. Yes. Okay, so we are reaching the end of this hearing. First, I would like to reiterate our appreciation for the state being here. We appreciate you being here. We know that not all states are here and that participate in such an active way. I also would like to thank civil society organizations for being here and for their constant work. There are some ideas that I would like to highlight. First, thinking we need to think about the things we agreed upon. Um, the existence of the military justice does not violate human rights. It's based on Article 8 and 25 of the American Convention, but that military justice must have exceptional characteristics. That's why we have the standards of the commission and of the court. That's the starting point. I also would like to think about the future, what we can do. And I would like to ask the executive secretariat to send the state the standards, maybe within the framework of an article 41 letter 
so that they know about the monitoring that we are conducting regarding constitutional processes. Also, we believe that it would be good to have a working meeting that will be processed or organized uh, through the executive secretariat following the procedures of the commission. There is a third element that I would like to present for the delegation of the state. And that's the possibility of a working meeting, a promotional meeting to about a report and to discuss all these standards. I was listening to the representative of the state, Mr. Duarte, and he talked about the involvement of women in the judicial system. But what's necessary is that standards are interpreted with a gender perspective and that's not and this resolution that was published by these uh, by the uh, human rights council is from 2008 2009 is a new one so i think that the commission within its monitoring work we could see the possibility of conducting an academic academic or a working visit in order to exchange these ideas and to inform about these new standards that are out there. And this is not only for the states, this is also for civil society because we need to work together with civil society so that we have this differentiated approach. I talked about sexual violence and I think there are a lot of things to discuss. And I would like to do something else apart from uh, thanking everyone and to thank my colleagues and the team of the executive secretariat. I know that for this hearing to be he, to be happening, there are a lot of people working behind the scenes. I would like to especially thank Mr. Victor Santiago and Mr. Oliveira and their families for being here today, for sharing with us their testimonies because in spite of the discussions that we can have, the situation of Victor Santiago, the effects on her, on his uh, physical health and his mental health, and also the effects or the consequences suffered by Mr. Oliveira, they are there. I would like to thank them for sharing their testimonies. And I would like to let you know that the commission will continue to work in that line. And the fact that you have been able to participate and to be here and as Victor Santiago said three or four times, he told us, I'm telling this so that this is not happening again, how we can prevent, that's the goal of this hearing. We need to think about reparation policies. We need to think about how we also prevent this from happening again. And as president of the Inter-American Commission and as rapporteur for Brazil, we are at your disposal. We are here to work together. And I would like to conclude, and I would apologize for the accent, but I did my best. I would like to tell you that you, the commission and I, we have one commitment. The respect for human have rights and nice dignity day. of people. Thank you so much. I would like to adjourn this hearing. Good morning. Have a nice day.